It's Brian Preston, the money guy. We've got a two part question next. This is from Kelly. She asked the first part. She says, why is 500 K the threshold for needing a financial advisor? That's kind of one of our approximate rules of thumb, right? But then Mac chimed in and said, you know, you guys talk about waiting for your savings to reach critical mass to bring in a financial advisor. So is it a waste to meet with somebody before that for planning purposes? Hmm. So how are you going to parse through kind of those decisions about when it's the right time to hire an advisor? Yeah, I'll start. I'll start on this one. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. The world has changed a lot. You know, if you look back uh, 20, 30, certainly 40 years ago, financial information wasn't like all that easy to come by. I mean, like you could maybe be reading the Wall Street Journal or you could go buy some books, but being able to educate yourself on things. Uh, financial topics was really, really difficult. So you kind of had to go see a professional. You had to go meet with somebody. You had to have someone in the industry that you could talk to. That's changed now. Now there are YouTube videos, there are podcasts, there are blogs, there are articles, there are all these different resources that allow us to educate ourselves. And so in our opinion, where it used to, you might, you know, you might need to go meet with a financial advisor as soon as you had $50,000 $50,000 because that was when you were able to get access to financial products and get access to different types of accounts. Now technology's caused it to where you can actually push that threshold back a little bit, I think, in, in my opinion. So uh, the 500000 that we arrive at, it's more sort of experiential of what we've seen in the lives of the people we work with. You know, we say all the time, there are really three times when we think reaching out to a financial advisor makes sense. The gravity of your financial decisions is really, really big. Your time is really, really scarce, or your complication ticks up. In our experience, it seems like that happens for a lot of folks when their investable assets get around 500,000 or sort of in that area of total, uh, total investable assets. I think it is uh, so much of the world is we have people on the extremes. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and let me tell you what I mean by that with when it comes to hiring a financial advisor. There are people that say the first time you graduate and start earning your first dollar, you know, real money, um, go hire this financial advisor because they'll charge you a, a subscription model mm-hmm. and it'll be affordable. So there's that extreme that you need how to do it from day one. And then there's the extreme if you go on some of these forums where people will say, why would you ever hire a financial advisor? You can do everything's been commoditized. You can buy index funds. So there's from day one of starting your work to all the way to never hiring a financial advisor. I just don't believe that we are on either one of those extremes. Mm -hmm. I think that there's obviously some moderation. I love the fact that you brought in technology because it is so easy to educate yourself. And when I have somebody reach out and they're in their 20s or 30s and that and let's face it, they 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 just they're not that complicated. Mm-hmm. Their savings strategy is so important. Your savings and investment percentage of your income is important. Making sure that you have the wills as soon as you have kids and you have life insurance as soon as you get married and have kids and and um have you know obligations. That stuff's pretty basic. But there is going to come a time, and this is why when I see these forums where they say you would never need a financial advisor. I, I chuckle, and you guys know how I feel about this, is because complexity follows success. Mm-hmm. You can try to hide from it. We give you all the simplistic. We give you all the appropriate strategies with the financial order of operations. You should be able to do a lot on your own. But even with us giving you the answer, we essentially give you the teacher's manual on how to handle your money, you're still going to come to a point where you go, man, I don't know where my blind spots are. I don't want to screw this up. And when I screw up my seven-figure portfolio, mm-hmm. I mean, this thing, I, I could have paid those guys 10 years for what I screwed up on this one decision. Yep. And and that's the thing that I think that it makes sense to get you a co-pilot when that level of complexity. And you kind of alluded to that with the three times. That's where we fall on this. Um, if you talk to Kelly or Mac, is that both those things are kind of saying the same thing. The Mac was talking about you kind of get to a point of critical mass where you start having the self-realization that this has gotten complex. I need somebody to help me maximize this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And just anecdotally, Kelly, we have figured out that it is right around that $500,000, $600,000 level because that's where you now have enough assets that you can actually still get value out of optimization 
but also bear the the drag cost that, that occurs with hiring somebody. So they, they work in, t- in in conjunction with each other. But one of them, I think it was the second part of the question was, hey, is it so? Is it a waste of money if I meet with someone before that? No. If if you feel like you need an extra checkup, if you feel like the thing that will allow you to stay on the financial path is to meet with someone even maybe before you get with that critical mass. I don't think that's a waste of money. Or if you determine, hey, at half a million, I'm still simple enough. I don't think I need a financial advisor. Maybe your number 750 or a million or one and a half million. It's not hard and fast to have to. It's just that's where we kind of see it often happens for a large portion of folks.